I have a cool effect for you today that's gonna use some basic After Effects, basic JavaScript, and basic storyline to create a pretty cool effect. So I will show you how to do each and every step of the process. I may fast forward uh, through some of the boring parts, uh, but hopefully this effect will kind of show you what you can do with a little bit of each of those skill sets and uh, take you pretty far. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and get prepared to have your hair blown back because after this tutorial, you're just gonna be amazed. Here's the thing that we're going to create today. We have a very pretty background image and I click see more and a beautiful page turn on top of it. Click hide and it goes away. See more. Oh my gosh, the page turn. Hide, it goes away. See more. I think you catch the drift. So there are a few steps to creating this effect. This is actually an image and storyline and then I'm layering uh, so I'm not using a full screen video. So first things first, Adobe After Effects. I have a rectangle with the CC page turn animation effect. It allows me to animate this little handle guy here. And then I added a gradient ramp to make it gray. And I'll explain why I like making things gray a little bit later in the video. Um, and then I added a little bit of a drop shadow. I need to save out a ping sequence. I go to composition, uh, render queue, change my lossless from QuickTime format to ping sequence. I want RGB and alpha because I want to be able to see through. And then I click OK, I browse. Notice how now it says comp to pound, 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 pound. I'll just give it the numbers. I'm gonna click render. And now those are saving out the pings. And ding, I have them on my desktop. There's my images. And now I just have all these pings with transparency of the page turn. That's beautiful. I'll add this guy, I'm just gonna drag and drop. And then I need to create state on this thing for every one of my pings, but here I created states. I Now I have states for one, two, three, four, five, six. I have states for every one of these images that I rendered as pings. So basically what I did was duplicate states. I named it 01, 02, 03, 04, kept duplicating, kept incrementing, and then I had all 33 of my states. Once I had my 33 states, I'd come into state 28, for example, right click, change picture, find number 28, Double click, replace, go to 29, right click, change picture, find image 29, replace. I did that for every single one of them. It's a little tedious to get all of the states in there, but once you have them and you've changed all the pictures out, you have this very cool effect. But now you may be wondering, okay, well I have all those states, how do I change between them? This is why I've added the slider. Now this slider is attached to a frame variable and it has a start of zero and an end of 33, I'm sorry. Notice I have 33 images. If I slide this, it's gonna go two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I've added actions that say, hey, when the state of that variable changes to one, change the state to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to 33. And now I have the slider because the variable's changing, the state of that page turn is changing. And because they're transparent pings, I can see through to the thing behind it. It is beautiful, it is glorious, it is amazing. On top of the slider, I also have some JavaScript that makes this animate. So let's talk through it line by line. First, we grab the storyline player. This git player says, hey, storyline player, I want you. Now we're gonna write a function that updates the frame, which is basically this variable, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. From the player, we're gonna say, hey player, we want your variable frame, and that's a number of what frame slash state the page should be on. Now there's also another variable called dir, which is basically the direction you want the page to turn. So it's either gonna be one or negative one. One means it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and negative one means it's gonna go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 5, 4, 3, 4, 2, 1. It's basically the direction you want the page to turn. So then I say, hey, I wanna change the frame number by the direction. So if it's positive, it's coming in. If it's negative, it's going in reverse, it's leaving the page. And then I wanna say, hey, if it's greater than 33, if it's at the end, stop. And if it's less than one, stop. And then I set the variable at the end of doing all that logic, which changes the variable, which then changes the state, which makes it animate. One more time real quick, update frame, get the frame number from storyline, get the direction from storyline, 
add the direction to the frame number that's either going to be positive one or negative one. It's going to either go up or down one. If it's at the end, the topmost, then stop there. If it's negative one, I'm going to stop and put it at zero, and then I'm going to clear the interval frame interval. And then I'm setting that variable in storyline. So you're maybe wondering what clear interval does, and that's the line I skipped. So in JavaScript, you can do a thing called set interval. And what that does is it allows you to run a function over and 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 over, and over, and over as many times as you want, as fast as you want. Set interval says, what function do you want to run, comma, how often do you want to run it? Here, what I have now is a thousand, which means a thousand milliseconds, which means once per second. Well, my video over here in After Effects, if I go to my composition settings, is 29.97 frames per second. So right now it's once per second. I want 29.97 times per second. So I could do a little bit of math, or I could just let the computer get as close as possible by just letting it do the math. So once per second, now I want it to do 29.97 times per second, and there we go. Let my computer do that math. So now it's gonna say 29.97 times a second, run update frame. If the direction is positive, it goes up one, up one, up one, up one. If it's negative, it goes down one, down one, down one, down one. And if it hits zero or 33, it stops where it's at. Now on my base layer, I click see more. I set the direction to one because I want it to go from zero to two to three to 33 and then stop. So I'm setting the direction to one so it's positive. I show the layer, the JavaScript executes, the variable changes, which makes the state update. Then it gets all the way over to 33 and it stops right there. Now because it's attached to the slider, I can slide the slider and the variable's changing so you can see it update as I slide the slider as well. And then when I click the hide button, it executes the exact same JavaScript, except now I'm setting direction to negative one, so it's playing in reverse. It's adding a negative one, so if it's 25, it's becoming 24, 23, 22, 21. Now, why did I set it as gray? Gray, that's okay, but I could do some other things. I could set the picture to be semi-transparent. Let's set it to 20% transparent, and now I can slightly see through it. That's kind of cool. So I could just layer it on top of my image, but also a cool thing about gray is I'm gonna reset. I can actually come down to these presets, and I'll make it red. But now, a red overlay just because I uh, came into the picture settings, changed the picture color recoloring option. So I can use any of these recoloring options, namely use those, um, you could use a transparency. I think you could bump the brightness down. You might start seeing through it. Nope, I'm not seeing through it. It actually looks pretty good. So that's why I'm using gray and by adjusting the brightness down, now I have a darker color. Um, I think if I take the brightness up though, I'm gonna see, yeah, so see now I see the, the, the kind of line. So you could take the darkness down, I made it red, so now it's like a blood red, that's kind of insane. I didn't have to go back into After Effects and re-render anything to get that new color, so I'm gonna go ahead and publish really quick. Okay, so it published, I'm over here in the browser and I didn't re-render my graphics, nothing. Click this, and now I have a beautiful red version without re-rendering anything, and it looks great. So that's kind of the benefit of going with the gray. I could recolor this blue. I could recolor it a couple other colors, uh, set the darkness down. I'm pretty sure I can increase the contrast. And now I have this really cool effect. What also is awesome, let's think about this. We have this image. Let's come in here. I'm gonna zoom out, maybe. I can rotate this. I'm gonna stretch this out and I'm gonna bring it down But once I get it into place. So now I put it on the bottom, publish it again real quick and see what we have. Okay, we're all published. I'm back in the browser. I'm gonna refresh and hopefully it looks kinda cool just from the bottom now because I just rotated the shape. Boom, not too shabby. That's kinda neat. It looks like a little like red carpet thing or something. So you could make one of these like page turns, get it the exact color that you want, and then just kind of reuse that functionality everywhere in your course. I could just have basically this JavaScript duplicated on every layer, or what I would probably do is I would have like a BG animation layer, and then I would add a layer on top of it, so that my text would be here, and then my text layer would not hide other layers. 
and I'll say, okay, BG animation layer. I would add a trigger that says show the layer. I don't even know where that is. Why don't I know where that is? My brain is not working. There it is. Show the text layer when the timeline reaches my cue point. And then that way I could have one animation layer and it would just always play from zero to 33 or whatever. And then my text would animate on on top of it because I'm not hiding uh, the layers beneath it. And then you could use like triggers and have like five text layers and then just have, have little random things animating on. I'm actually gonna undo a lot of that because I want the animation, I want it to actually go back to the left side. So I went ahead and republished uh, just so it's on the left again. Um, and I will share these files, but you know, you could have done a million things. Like I could have a full screen uh, kind of page transition if I wanted to, that is like, uh, I made a cool video uh, back in college where it's like a transition of like poker suit shapes. Uh, you could do something like that. Uh, add a bunch of pings and then use JavaScript to transition between them and then the next slide shows up. You could really do anything with this functionality. And the cool thing is because it's pings, it's sitting on top of this image so you could transition on top of any image. I could change out that image in the background and it'll work perfectly. So, you know, play around with the files, play around with ideas, share them. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas or you want to try to kick the tires on some uh, some creative projects, let me know. You know, dig in and let me know what you come up with. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, talk to you soon. Whew. If you're anything like me, whew, you're worn out. But that's pretty cool. So uh, go use it on other stuff. Whew, that was a good tutorial. Woo! Woo, doggy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>